everybody! Great child, it's finally your time. You hang out to Looney and <laughs> Tracy. Ah, why are you looking at me like that? I'm sorry. Seriously, this girl. I don't know what it is. I think she's just living up to her name. She's no, just a little loony today. No, I'll, I'll be normal. Are you fine? I'm fine. <laughs> you. I'm good, thanks. It's good. You know, it's just the last stretch. I yes, that's, you know. That's, that's why it is. You know. Just, it's time yes. To Focus. It's been a long afternoon for you, I know. <laughs> what are we doing for the great tiles today? Today we're going to do graphs of motion. So last week we did a little bit of um, equations of motion. Today we're going to look at some more graphs. And I promise you, you are going to get them in your exam. So we're obviously just going to scratch the surface a little bit, guys. You've got, to find you've got to find lots and lots of practice questions. But they're graphs of motion for vertical motion only. So we've got a lot to do today. All right, great tiles. You heard it. Graphs of motion. We are going to scratch the surface. <laughs> anyway, how to get a hold of us? Add Learn Extra, Facebook and Twitter, learn.mindset.co.za. You get the notes, you get the videos and you get the s schedules. I can feel the judgment <laughs> on my side. But it's anyways. no judgment, really. No judgment, <laughs> my girl. Guys, you know that, okay, by now you know from last night and the previous shows, we do have a Test Yourself competition proudly brought to you by Vodacom because we're giving away airtime. So all you need to do is download the show notes, do everything else, but importantly, do the Test Yourself section. And then what you do with that is that you submit it into the entry form. And all of this information is on our Facebook page. Fill in the entry form correctly. And then tomorrow the winners will be announced. Remember, entries are open until 10 p.m. tonight. So you can do everything you want until 10 p.m. Just a quick hint. On the entry form, it asks um, who the presenter is for today. Presenter equals the teacher. So it's not <laughs> me. It's <laughs> Tracy. And it's TK okay. and it's Tracy. So just a young hint for you guys. So make sure you do that so that you can stand yourself a chance to win 110 Rand a time. I will announce the winner from last night's show when we go to the break. So then Tracy can do her thing and give us the lesson. Brilliant. Eight time, that's very cool. Yes. Very cool. Yes, I didn't yes. actually know they were doing that. No, very cool, no. guys. Mm. And also, you know what's the nice thing about besides, and now I'm going to do a teacher moment. This this is one of those teacher moments where besides the chance of being able to win airtime, which is bonus, you get to learn. Yes. But you can do stuff with the airtime as well. Like you can oh download yeah. the show notes Even on your better. phone. Data. Mm -hmm. Even better. Well, my yes. learners are very excited. They've learned how to download the show notes. And yes. then they go, they get to take me home with them. Yes. Like, Yay. That's a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Seeing as they see me every day in class. <laughs> so, moving on. So, what are we going to do today? Well, today we're going to do calculations from graphs of motion, which represent vertical motion. Remember, this shows vertical motion only. Challenge question. I love these type of challenge questions, but I'm hoping you, you're not going to find it too much of a challenge by the time we're done. And the question says to us, which one of the following graphs is the correct one for the motion of a ball that falls to the ground and bounces back? Very important. They say you, tell you take upward as positive. So we've got three graphs. Sorry, four graphs. Okay. And the first graph starts at naught, goes down below the axis, goes up to positive, ends up back at naught. And this one's just a little bit smaller. It looks almost identical. Then we've got this one, and then we've got another one. Okay, now remember, uh, they're probably a little hard to see on the screen, but they are on the notes. Okay, so make sure you download them. This is a very, very, very important type of question, grade 12s. Bouncing balls are very important okay so we touched on graphs a little bit last week so we're just going to go through it again and then we're going to hit those questions so the first thing is remember that we can represent the motion of a projectile by ooh, there we go by using a whole bunch of graphs say they're the same graphs you used in grade 10 okay if you remember correctly you did equations of motion in grade 10 you did graphs of motion and you probably hated them because in grade 10 they could actually get quite complicated with all different si shapes and things and that doesn't happen in grade 12 anymore simply because we are looking specifically at projectile motion. So we're looking at objects that either bounce on the floor and come back up or go up and come down, but they all have the same basic motion. So the first thing is we can use position time graphs, which is your displacement time graph. And remember that a position time graph means that it's delta y, okay? Velocity is V and acceleration 
is a please be careful here grade 12s when you do delta y and delta x delta x is your horizontal plane the delta x is the same as it, the x plane in your cartesian plane from maths okay so it's horizontal delta y is vertical just like in maths so when an object is accelerating the type um, position versus time graph will always be a curve so just a basic one, if we have an object, so this is delta y over here, our object is um, moving upwards, it's going to get slower and slower and slower, so it becomes a curve. It will always be a curve of some, some sort, okay? Whether it's above the line, below the line, that's irrelevant at this point because that's determined by which direction we take as positive. The thing is you've got to look at the gradient. The gradient of this graph represents the velocity, so you've got to look at whether the velocity is getting smaller or bigger. If the velocity is constant, then the graph will be a straight line. Now, that you're not going to see very often at this point with um, vertical motion, simply because it's always going to be accelerating. Vertical motion means that it's going to accelerate due to gravity. So that's not going to be too much of an issue. When an object is experiencing constant, and this is very important for this section, acceleration, a velocity time graph will be a straight line. Even if you go back and look at the graphs from the challenge question, there may be a whole bunch of straight lines going in different directions, but they are all straight lines. So what that graph ends up looking like, whether it goes from negative to positive, and then maybe like the challenge question maybe comes down a little bit, all have to be straight lines. Okay, the straight line tells me that the acceleration is constant because the gradient Okay, we're going to get back there. The gradient is very, very important. Okay, I should have actually put this earlier. The gradient of a position versus time graph gives me velocity. I just said that. The gradient of my velocity time graph gives me acceleration. The nice thing about this section is that I know, because we're dealing with vertical motion, and we're only dealing with objects that are accelerating due to gravity, because we ignore air resistance, they make life very easy for us, the gradient must always be 9,8, okay? So it makes life very, very easy. We like that, okay? The gradient of the velocity time graph gives us acceleration. The area under the graph gives us the displacement of an object. Now, grade 12's the next. How you calculate that area really is determined by how, how much maths you can remember. That just came out wrong. What I'm trying to say to you is the your graph and your area under your velocity time graph can often be broken up into triangles and squares, or mainly for these a whole bunch of triangles. However, sometimes it's the shape of a rhombus, which is a parallelogram where two sides are parallel and the other two sides aren't. If you can remember the equation to find the area of a rhombus, you're welcome to use it. But remember, grade 12s, you are not given those equations, okay? They, you are not given them. The new exam guidelines have come out, grade 12s. Please ask your teachers to make a copy of the information sheet for you so that you know what to expect. The area equations are not there, so be careful, please. Now, due to projected objects only experiencing gravity, acceleration due to gravity, the acceleration time graph is always a straight line. Whether it's above the x-axis or below the x-axis de is determined by the direction you choose as positive. Okay? If you've chosen going up as the positive direction, then your acceleration due to gravity is negative because it always acts down. If you've chosen down as positive, then your acceleration due to gravity is positive because acceleration due to gravity always acts down. So just be careful there, all right? And then the area under an acceleration time graph gives you velocity. It's been a long time since I've seen a question where they asked for the area. Okay, the thing you need to remember with acceleration time graphs, grade 12, is your acceleration cannot change direction. Please be careful. I know it's tempting, particularly when the object changes direction. So your object goes up and then it comes down, and you're going, well, it changed direction, the velocities change direction, acceleration must, no, no, acceleration is always down because we are always pulled towards the earth, for which I am very grateful, 
okay? Because then when I jump up and down in my class, which I don't do on a regular basis because I've got a wooden floor and it, and it makes a noise, okay? I'm quite grateful that when I jump up, I can come back down. I don't really want to go floating off into the air, okay? Or if I throw something into the air, or could you imagine trying to play cricket, for example, and there's no gravity that acts down, gravity decided to go on holiday or act up or whatever, you know, when, when our cricketers hit a six, the ball would never come down. That would be a problem, you know. Or even worse, when we're watching a rugby game and we're going for a penalty or a conversion and they kick the ball and the ball just keeps floating. Imagine how many balls we'd have to buy. This would be a problem. So gravity always acts down. Okay, we got that? So, I've done a little summary of what we're going to do. And I think, Looney, we're mm -hmm. going to take... We can take a break now, okay. and then we're going to do a couple of questions. All right. Can She's I just now singing. No, I just want to find the winner. Can you just allow me? S sorry, I did it too soon for her. No, it's fine. I have mm -hmm. it. It's right here. Here you go. There we go. <laughs> My sisters, congratulations to Ompile Njabele. You have won yourself 110 rand airtime from last night's test yourself competition so congratulations to you your airtime shall be sent to you and then you can just download your notes and do everything because we love you we want to you know yes my <laughs> hmm. yes. sisters we are going to take a break so don't go anywhere we'll see you straight after this please don't go Welcome back, my sisters, from that break. Quick shout out to Madluputu Musa Samuel. He says, Hi, Luni. I like the energy, and a shout out will do, please. So, shout out to you. And then a shout out also to Mojalefa Daniels X, Vincent, um, Victor, Lloyd, Tembo, Noel, Lloyd again, Reynolds, Lebohang, and Vincent again. Thank you so much, my sisters, for tuning in. See, now I'm acting all normal because people are judging me. And they say I'm going crazy, I'm like high on sugar and all of that stuff. So from now on, this is how I'm going to speak and this is how it's going to go. So Tracy, can you give us a lesson? Good luck with that, Lini. Actually, they're <laughs> not blaming sugar, they're blaming me. I'm just saying, <laughs> put it out there. But it's okay, Lini. You know what, it's better to be a little... Yeah, I know. Not it's normal. Fun. There's nothing wrong with it. She wants to be normal anyway. Okay. So, guys, we started with a question which was actually asked by one of our mindsetters last week. So we decided to put it in the notes. So we just want to say thank you to Stylo. I think that's how I say his name. Yes. Yes, Stylo. I'm not even going to try to say the rest of it because it's just going to get embarrassing. Yeah. In I fact, know. we're, what, six weeks into term and I still have my learners correct in the way I say their <coughs> names. So they still get called Sweetie and Pumpkin <laughs> and such things. Anyway. So it is a great question. Apparently it's from last year's Cozulian Intel June paper. It's a really, really nice question. I just add a little something at the end, but I really like this question, Stanley. So I really hope you're paying attention. Guys, we want your questions. We want to be able to help you. And you know, we run out of questions eventually and we just start to feel like we rehash it. It was nice to see something new. All right, so they tell you an object is projected vertically upwards at 8,7 meters per second. Now, grade 12s, what I want to show you while we do this is how to, what I call, read actively. You, I'm sure you've heard about the term about listening actively, when you nod your head and you're actually listening to what somebody's saying and you, you, you agree with them or don't agree with them, as the case may be, but you don't wonder, you're not thinking about what you're ha going to have for dinner or anything like that. You must do the same when you read. So you need to have a pencil in your hand or a highlighter or something. I would say a pencil or a pen, because I'm also going to draw as I go along, so it makes it much easier to understand the situation. So they say to me that an object is projected, let me use a different color, an object is projected vertically upwards at 8,7 meters per second squared from the roof of a building of unknown height. That's probably important, I don't know. So here we have my building. My object is projected and it starts at 8,7 meters per second. On its way down, the object passes a point P. So let's just say here's point P, okay, which is, they tell me, 34 
0.80 meters above the ground, so it's above the ground, there's point B, it takes the object 1.25 seconds to strike the ground from point P. So my delta T over here is 1.25 seconds. Now I've got a diagram that makes things a little bit easier, but then they sa say something that is extremely important. They say take up as positive. No matter what you've been taught, grade 12s, and I do know that sometimes as teachers we tend to teach you things that we think will make your life easier. So, for example, some of you might have been told by your teachers, always take down as positive, always, always, always because then you know A is going to be 9,8. That is a problem here because the question says take up as positive. If you change that around and make down positive, you will lose marks. Okay, it was done very specifically, so you cannot change that. What this means for us, and this is a big NB, we know that my object is moving like this as it comes down, as it comes down, and in fact, even as it goes up, the acceleration it experiences is minus 9,8 meters per second squared. I'm saying minus because acceleration due to gravity is always down. No exceptions, okay? This is positive. That's my initial velocity. And let's just see what we do. Now it says, show that the magnitude of the velocity at point P is 21,72 meters per second. Now we're going to go, okay, I need to know what the velocity at point P is. And we look at the information we're given, and automatically some of you are going to go, I want to use the 8,7. There's a bit of a problem using that 8,7 because I don't know what this little distance is between going up and coming back down. I don't know how long it takes to get to point P, but I do know stuff about what happens after point P. And I'm going to write it down. So after point P, this is what I know. I always write a list. Okay. This list is not for marks, this is for me. I'm going to do it here. Delta T and delta Y. Now, this is what I know. First of all, they want to know what is the velocity at point P. That would be initial velocity. I know that it's going at minus 8, 9,8, sorry, meters per second squared. I know, because now I've written it on the diagram, that it's going at 1, comma, well, it took 1,25 seconds. And the distance is 34,80 meters, okay? Now, did you see what happened there, Grace Holmes? I didn't need to go back and read all of that stuff because it was all there. I could see from my diagram, so it makes my life a lot easier. Now I look at the information given and I go, now I've got to choose an equation of motion. I can't use anything with VF in. I cannot use an equation that has VF in because I don't know VF. That means I have to use this equation. Delta Y equals VI delta T plus a half A delta T squared. Okay? So, first of all, I've made a mistake. Well, I haven't made a mistake yet. But I would if I carried on. My displacement is minus 34,8. Why am I saying that? Because point B, P is over here, and this 34,8 is below point B, P. Anything underneath means it's going down, and anything down is negative. Okay, so just be careful, because if actually, if I had left that, if I may put it in here as a positive, I'm going to get the wrong sign completely for my final answer, and that's going to become a problem. So this is 34,80. I don't know VI, but I do know T, which is 1,25. Okay, and I'm going to run out of space again. I'm going to try to write a little smaller. This is minus 9,8, and it's not going to work, so just pretend it's all one line. Okay, 
There we go. Now, you there's more than one to do it from here, grade 12s, okay? If you need to work out every step, then please do it. If from here you can plug this straight into calculator, get the final answer, go for it. Okay, it really is not an issue. But let's just do this in step form, okay? Because I want you to see where we're going. And I need to work out what the half, so I'm going to go half times 9.8 times 1.25 squared and gives me a fraction. Remember, we can't do that. So it's 7 comma 65625. So I'm actually going to leave that in there. So watch what I'm going to do. So minus 34,80 equals 1,25 vi. This was negative. And let's just remind ourselves it was 7, 65, 6, 2, 5. It's 7, 6, 5, 6, 2, 5. Okay. From here, I actually am going to do this in one step. So I've got negative. 34.8, okay, I'm going to add the 7,625, which was my last answer, okay, so I don't actually even have to worry whether I put it in, right, so let me say, there we go, negative, and I'm going to divide by 1.25, and I get negative 21,715, which means it's 21,72, but my answer is negative 21 comma 72 which tells me what it's going down so that means it's 21 comma 72 meters per second down because it's negative okay we all happy with that okay good now now comes the fun question i'm going to go back here and i'm going to say fine i know that over here it's going to 21 comma 72 meters per Second, now they say to you, what is the height of the building? Now we go, okay, this is actually a bit mean, but it's all right. I know the height from P, so essentially, if I can work out the height from the top of the building to point P, I can just add it to the 34,080. So if I just look at that part of the motion and I write down what I know, this is what I know. My final velocity is this minus 21,72. My initial velocity is the 8,70. A is minus 9,8. And I want delta Y. I'm using the whole motion. Grade 12s, if you need to split this up into different sections, please go ahead and do that. Though this question probably is only worth about four or five marks, so I should be able to do it in one section. So be careful here. I want you to see what we're going to do. Don't have time. Can't use time. The 1,25 is not important anymore because that was from P down. So we're going to go, we're going to use this equation. Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2A delta Y. Okay? Vf squared, that's minus 21 comma 72 squared. That's going to be equal to 8 comma 70 squared plus, and this is 2 times minus 9 comma 8 delta y. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly rearrange this so you, I can show you how I put this into my calculator. This must, the 8 comma 70 is going to come over, so this is going to be minus 21 comma 72 squared minus 8 comma 70 squared. I then divide by 2 times minus 9 comma 8. That's going to give me delta y. And I so did not leave myself enough space. <laughs> anyway, so let's put this on the cal in the calculator. Okay, so bracket minus 21.72 squared. Okay, minus... 8.7 squared, 70 squared, there we go, gives you minus 447, okay, that doesn't look right, because I put the minus, do you guys see what I've done wrong, I'm hoping somebody's screaming at me right now, when I put this in over here, guys, that's fine, this minus is a problem, that shouldn't be there, okay, well, no, it should be there, 
the bracket over here is fine. My problem is where I put the square. Okay, let's take, get rid of that. that. There's where it should be squared. Much better. 396. Okay, I'm going to divide that by 2 times minus 9.8. And I get minus 20,21. Okay. Now, I am so didn't leave myself enough space, so I'm going to do it over here. So, delta y is now minus 20, 21. That means it's gone 20, 21 meters below where it started. So, we go back here. This little distance there is 20, 21. They wanted the total height, so I add it to the 34,80. Okay. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to say the height of the building is 20,21 plus 34, what was it? 34, no, 35, what? It's a good thing I remember what it was. 34,80. Who knows what I actually wrote in my notes? Okay. So that means I get an answer here of... Uh, let's just rather do it on the calculator because it's always safer. Okay, 20.21 plus 30.8 gives 34 me 51.01. Plus 34.8. That's, thank you. You what? said 30. And I put in 30. I make mistakes. That's you why see? We, thank you. You see? See, somebody's paying attention uh, to me. Uh. All right. <laughs> so we get 55.01. Mm, thank you, Looney. <laughs> Okay, 55,01 meters. We're all happy. Okay. Now, I love this question. It says, draw a graph of velocity versus time graph to represent the motion, the, the motion of this object. First of all, it starts at 8,70. That's my initial velocity. So velocity is here. I don't actually know what velocity ends up as. I didn't actually work it out before it hits the ground. But what I do know is that after a certain period of time, it goes below the x-axis. That should be a straight line, so ignore the curve. Okay, should be a straight line, goes below the x-axis, all the way down. Okay, so this is where it goes to the top of its motion, and then somewhere down here is point P. Okay, which we would know but we don't know the time and stuff, so we're not going to worry too, too much about that. Okay, so hopefully we're okay. Let's salt on. The next question's not quite so long. Okay, I love this question as well. Hot air balloon is rising vertically at a constant velocity when the balloon is at a height of 88 meters above the ground. They've given it to me over here. A stone is released from it. The displacement time graph below represents the motion of the stone from the moment it's released from the balloon until it strikes the ground. Ignore the effects of air resistance. What I really like about this is by giving you your, your displacement time graph, they've actually shown you the motion of the stone. Okay, so the stone's moving up with the hot air balloon, and when it gets released, if you are watching the stone from the ground, this is the motion you will see. This is what you see happen. Okay, which is really nice, because it's easy then to know what's going on. And now they say to you, Use the information from the graph to answer the following questions. Calculate the velocity of the stone, sorry, of the hot air balloon at the instant the stone is released. Now, usually, from something like this, I would say to you that you would need to find the gradient of the graph, but this is a curve. So I can't use the gradient of the graph. But what I do know is that the, the balloon is going up, and by using this 88 meters, they're saying to me, that it starts 88 meters above the ground and then moves up and then comes back down. The ground is my reference point. Up is positive. Okay? You need to recognize that. All right? Up is positive. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, that means I know my final displacement is actually minus 88 and I know it takes 8 seconds to get there. Okay, so when we look at this, we're going to go fine. We're actually going to use, I want, I don't know VF, I want VI, 
A is, because I'm going up is positive, A is minus 9,8. Delta T, it takes 6 seconds to hit the ground. I'm using the whole motion. And they tell me that delta Y is actually minus 88. So I'm saying up is positive for this, okay? So the equation I can use, it's the nicest one, delta Y equals VI delta T plus a half A delta T squared, okay? I can't use anything with VF in it. I don't know VF. So we've got minus 88. VI is what I'm looking for. T is 6 seconds. We've got minus 9,8 and we've got 6 squared. Okay, so when I put this into my calculator, VI, I'm just going to show you, is going to be equal to minus 88 minus a half times this value, which whatever it happens to be, all divided by 6. So when I put this into my calculator, I'm going to go minus 88 minus, and I'm going to put in brackets, a half times negative 9,8 times 6 squared. Oh, no, no. Let's put the times in. That's always a good idea. Times 6 squared equals. Okay. And I'm going to take that answer, and I'm going to divide by 6, and I get 14,73. It's a positive value. That makes sense because I said up was positive. Okay. And last little thing to do with this one. It says draw a sketch graph of velocity versus time for the motion of the stones released. Indicate the res respective values of, on th of the intercepts on your VT graph. So we said up is positive. Okay. It starts going up and it gets to zero and then it changes direction. I want you to see something. At this point here, this time, which is one and a half seconds, here it's reached the top of its motion. That's the intercept they want. So this is one and a half seconds. You just worked out that it's going at 14,7. Okay. And it ends at six seconds so that's time oh there is absolutely horrific just so you know guys my my learners won't about my handwriting today as well so it's okay and there's our graph straight line just like our last one okay now that i think i have completely blown their little minds it's time for a break all right mind blower Thank you so much guys for tuning in. We'll take your answers straight after this break, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back, Mindsetters. Now everyone wants shout out. So, Essie, <laughs> hi there. Thanks for tuning in. Tracy. Can I go? Yes. Okay. <laughs> wow, that was a short introduction. Yes. All right, guys. We're going to jump straight into the challenge question. And I've been told that the popular answers for the challenge question, and I actually am quite pleased about it, which sounds quite bad because they're the wrong answers, but it does help me to correct some misconceptions, is A and D. And I'm going to tell you now neither of those are correct, but I'm going to explain to you why. So listen carefully. They tell you that a, a ball falls to the ground and bounces back up. So what you're seeing in your head, I'm just going to draw a little picture at the top, is a ball's coming down, bounces to the ground, and then bounces back up. And they say to you, take up as positive. So that means over here, my initial velocity over here is negative and my final my velocity as it's coming up this way is positive so that's the first thing I need to get okay so straight away that tells me there's a problem with D now D looks very similar to what would happen the problem is I'm telling you that 
it's up is positive. So what you're saying over here is you're taking down as positive. That's the first mistake, okay? Plus, somehow you're saying to me that the ball is going to stop and then increase in velocity again, which it's not doing, okay? I know this looks like the shape, but that's not what's happening, okay? Same with C. So now we get to A and we get to B. So these are more correct, okay? The ball is dropped, which means it starts from zero, which is great, so we get that. Down is, um, sorry, up is your positive direction, so you guys realize that it's got to move down, so it's negative. So far, A and B are the same, and now you're going, but Tracy, what actually is the difference between the two graphs? Look, watch carefully. Up to where it, basically where it hits the ground, that's the point where we see the change in motion. That's the same for both. In A, what is happening, and this is why A is incorrect, and it's, a, it's sometimes difficult to see on the board or in the notes, is this value over here, which is the value it hits the ground with, is actually smaller than the value it leaves the ground with. If you look at the scale, you can see that that velocity is now bigger. So somehow, this ball has gained velocity. Never going to happen when something bounces. Remember, it's like a momentum issue. The ball hits the ground, there's a collision with the ground, you're going to hear a sound. It's going to lose kinetic energy. It's not an elastic collision. Because it's not an elastic collision, it cannot leave the ground, one with the same velocity it hit the ground with, or even better, with a velocity greater than it hit the ground with. So that's the issue with this question, okay? Is the velocity, because this indicates when it's going back up, that velocity is too big. So now we get to here and we say, well, that's smaller than that one, that's great. But now I'm sure some of you are going, but wait, Tracy, there's a little bit of a slant over here. That's actually the most accurate way to draw these graphs, is to have that little bit of slant, because remember, when the ball hits the ground, there's got to be what we call deformation. So any ball, hard, soft, anything in the middle, as it hits the ground, it actually deforms. It gets a little bit smaller, and then it springs back up and it comes out. That time on the ground is indicated by that slope. Generally, we ignore that time on the ground because it's just easier, okay? Particularly in calculations, we pretend it's not there. But in a graph, it really should go off at an angle. If you're asked to draw this graph, that line really should be a dotted line. Okay, it shouldn't actually be a solid line. But the point is, and the answer here is B, is that it goes, you cannot have, okay, you cannot have it come off at a velocity greater, and you've got to get the direction the right way around. Okay, so hopefully we're all okay with that. So, Looney. Uh-huh. Hit me with some questions. <laughs> okay. Let's see if I can help some of our mindset. Alright. Okay, from Nekavambe Kodani. Yes. What's the difference in shape between a projectile that is thrown and bounces off the surface and a projectile that is thrown vertically upward and moves back to the ground? Okay, so you're asking me what's the difference between one that comes and bounces and one that's thrown up. Well, okay, so let's take one that bounces, so it comes down and then it bounces back up. Now we're going to have to choose the same direction as positive. So let's make down positive, okay, which is actually the graph we just drew. Okay, so the one you just saw, if we make down as positive, the graph will do that. If we say now it's been thrown up and comes back down, and we're still making down as positive, it's the best way to, to see the difference, okay. So it's going to start with a velocity which is going to be negative, okay? And it doesn't, then it gets to zero, which is the top part, and then it just keeps going. It doesn't change direction in the middle, okay? So objects that bounce, your velocity time graph will have a change in direction. And like I said, actually, we should have, um, let me just do this. When you draw it, we should have actually done this and gone... It should, do, should be a dotted line, and then it comes back up, whereas this is one solid line because it's one motion. There's no change. 
Okay. All right. Yep. And then Deli Sela and Kayam are both asking, why is Delta Y negative um, negative eighty eight if the upward if the upward motion was positive? Okay. Because I'm glad you asked, um, because I know that becomes a bit of a problem. So if I go back to it was no, it was this one. Okay. I said up is positive. Okay. Because I took up as positive, understand that when I look at my displacement, this, I'm taking that as my reference, which means the object is ending 88 meters below where it started. Okay, so from its starting point to the bottom, it's now 88 meters below where it started. And I said anything going up is positive, so if it's below where it started, that means it's negative. That's where it comes from. It all depends on your sign convention. Okay? Oh, okay. And then she goes, you didn't ask right. This is the first question. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's the difference in shape in a, posi in a position time graph? And a? And a what? Mm. Okay, so it wasn't... So, so, so it's from the first question. You know the first question So you says, gave me the wrong question. No, this is what she wrote. What's the difference in shape between a projectile that is thrown and bounces off the surface and a projectile that is thrown vertically oh, upward? So, but she actually wants the position time graph. So now she says, I wrote it wrong. And she goes, you didn't ask that right. What's the difference in shape in a position time graph? Thank you. Okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now that we're all speaking the same language. Yes. Good question. Let's stick with what I said. We'll take down as positive again, because it's just going to make our lives a bit easier. Okay. And if we look at the bouncing ball and we're taking down as positive, okay, that means it goes from its starting position, it gets further and further away, and then it comes back to its starting position. Okay. So actually, this one never goes into the negative, which is great. Starts at zero, and what we need to recognize with the bouncing ball is that it's falling down, which means it's actually speeding up as it goes down. So it gets faster and faster and faster, so it's a curve. It hits the ground, okay? When it hits the ground, it now changes position, but it gets slower and slower as it comes up, but it doesn't, never goes back to its original height. So actually, it ends up doing that. So it almost looks like a very wonky moustache. Okay. okay. Um, so it looks a little bit like a wonky moustache, that's what I said. So this is delta Y and this is delta T. For an object that's thrown up, I said to you, let's use up as the, so yeah, we're we using, no, we're using down as my positive direction. So now when the object is thrown up, it's not, go it's going up, which is in the op wrong direction for it to be positive, and it's speeding up. It's slowing down, gets to zero, then it speeds up and goes back into the positive direction and that looks like a smile. Okay, so with the, as with the velocity time graph, when there's a bouncing ball, you, it's always almost like you're joining two graphs together because you, because you almost got to consider the two parts of the motion when it hits the, hits it as two different parts of the motion. Whereas with an object that's thrown or dropped, it's one thing, okay? So with it being thrown or dropped, it's more like a parabola, okay? It's just missing the, the left-hand side here. This is more like, um, no, it's not even nothing. It's more like two hyperbolas, okay? All right. Does and that help, I hope? Hopefully. Now I'm right answering the right question. Yes. And then Kayam is asking, what happens if there is no time in a position versus time graph and if down is taken as positive? Um, well, these don't have time, sweetie. So none of these have time. These are sketch graphs. We, we're specifically just looking at the shape. Hopefully, when you're asked to draw a graph in an exam, they'll only ask you like I did if we look at the first question I did and I drew the graph, okay, over here. Okay, if we go up, come down to the graph, all I did is write in the information I knew that's all they'll ask you to do. Even with the next one, with the balloon, I only included the information I knew. If you don't have the time, then they just want in the shape. Okay, so don't stress about that. You only need to include time if it's something you've worked out or something that was given. Okay. All right, and this is quite a long one. 
Okay. From Anam Tombin. I think you need some space. Okay. A boy fires a pellet gun upwards from the top of a cliff. Okay. The pellet leaves the gun at 15 ms minus 1 yeah. and strikes the ground at 25 meters per second. Okay. Ignore the effects of resistance. Calculate the heights that the pellet was shot from. This is actually a really nice question. Now we can do this quickly. Okay. okay. Now, we are going to take up as positive because I like to take the original direction as positive. Okay, so we're going to take up as positive which then tells me that A is equal to minus 9,8 and it tells me that my final velocity at the bottom there is minus 25. We can do this in one step because you want it to, they want the height of the building. Is that what they said? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're looking for delta Y, which is this part over here. And we can do this, ignore my building just had a little bit of extra space there, okay? So what I know, if I look, give, do my list, I've got minus 25 for my final velocity. My initial is 15 because it was going up and I'm choosing up as positive, okay? My acceleration is minus 9,8 meters per second squared. Delta T, you don't know, it's not actually important. And we want delta Y. So because I don't have delta T, I don't want to do anything with delta T. So we're going to use the equation that doesn't have delta T in, which means I'm going to use the equation VF squared equals VI squared plus 2A delta y okay vf is minus 25 vi was 15 if i yes that's what we wrote good all right so this is minus so it's two times minus 9 comma 8 so to get delta y i'm going to take the minus. so this becomes minus 25 all squared minus 15 squared that's going to be divided by minus 19 comma 6 because that's what 2 times 9 comma 8 is. Okay, so let's put this into the calculator. So I've got uh, minus 25 squared minus 15 squared. That's what it's equal to divided by negative 19.6 and I get minus 20 comma 4 1. Okay, so delta y is minus 20 comma 4 1 but what that means that we haven't answered the question yet I got a negative answer which is fine because the build he the starting point is above the ending point okay so it ends below where it started and I said anything going up is positive so because it ends below I get a negative answer which is what I got so therefore my height of the building is 20,41 meters. Okay. Easiest way to do it. Okay, and then added on to that question, Anna also says, and the time that it takes for the pillar to reach the ground. And now we want delta T. Yes. Brilliant. We can do that. We don't need the height. Let's ignore the height. Okay, because now what we're going to do is we're going to use VF because they want A. Okay. VF is minus 25, VI is 15, that's minus 9,8. So to get delta T, when it looks like a T and not a fat baby type thing, that's minus, ooh, jeez, it's just getting worse, look at that. So that's going to be minus 25, minus 15, divided by minus 9,8, and I no, no ways can I do this in my head. So 25 uh, minus 15 divided by negative 9.8, and I get 4,08 seconds. How do I know I'm right? I've got a positive answer. That's a good indication. If I've got a negative answer here, I absolutely did something wrong. Time can never, ever ever, ever, I don't know if you're getting this, ever be negative because then somehow we've managed to go back in time and as much as that would be nice, we can't. Okay. All right. Okay, and then mom, mm, my bandy. 
Ravonia is asking, if I take upward as positive, does it mean that my answer must be negative? No, it depends on the question, sweetie. In this case, my answer is negative because it ends below where it started. But if I take up as positive and we have, say, they decide that a bird comes along. Okay, I can't draw, so this pretend that's my bird. Okay, it's a very bad bird. Yes, it looks like a cross, just go with that's it. That's fine. Okay, <laughs> but it's a bird who has a thing for pellets from, from shotguns, and he comes along and he eats the pellet. Shame, probably not going to do him very well. But if I now had to work out, if I had more information, this displacement, okay, I would get a positive answer because it's above. So it all depends on the question. Sometimes you're going to get negative, sometimes you're going to get a positive. It depends on the question. There's no yes or no to that one. All right. Kay. And then Kayam is asking, what is terminal velocity? Good question. Terminal velocity can only be reached by an object that's thrown or falls from a great height. Parachutes, those silly people who jump out of perfectly good working airplanes, not on my bucket list, just so you know. <laughs> but when they jump out of the airplane, they fall and they accelerate, but as they're falling, the force of gravity pulls them down, but remember we're in a real world, so air resistance pushes up on them, and as they gain velocity, their air resistance increases. The faster they go, the more air resistance they feel. Till eventually, the force acting down, which is their gravity, equals the air resistance acting up, which then means the force pulling up, force pulling down are equal, F net equals zero. This is from Newton's second law, which means acceleration equals zero. They have now reached their absolute maximum velocity. They cannot go any faster because the air resistance equals the gravity, terminal velocity is reached. But you won't get it by throwing something off the third story of a building. It's got to be from a reasonably high height. Okay. Okay, and then Bob was asking, was it not supposed to be minus 21 instead of... Oh, sorry. Was it not supposed to be minus 20.21 instead of 20.21 plus 34.8? Remember that question? Oh, my God, okay. we don't have time. Okay, we don't really have time. <laughs> um, I don't think there's any errors in my answers, sweetie. Okay. Um, so I think he's asking, no, that the one up question. here, because yeah. we seriously are going to run out of time over here. Yes. Let's go, let's have a look. Um, no, it was minus, but then when I add it to the height of the building, I, I add it together. Okay, guys, I, when I use it, I've got to add it. So, yes. Sorry, sweetie. It's time to say goodbye. We are going to start organic chemistry next week. Very exciting. All right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Love you. Don't forget, test yourself. It ends at 10 p.m. So you can just... <laughs> enter the competition and then yes we love you very much and i'll see you next week bye <laughs>